EBIT and EBITDA are not the same thing. And depending on which one you look at, a company can look safe or completely screwed. Guys, I just got out of the parking lot going to the stock exchange. You remind me that I am on parking level five for me, thanks. EBIT and EBITDA are both trying to answer the same thing. How strong is this business before financing decisions? But they answer it in two very different ways. One is conservative, one is generous. And lenders know exactly why they pick one over the other. And please don't let me let, forget level five. I don't want to be searching for my car all day. So EBIT stands for earnings before interest and taxes. That's it. EBIT is profit from operations after accounting for wear and tear. EBIT assumes machines break, buildings age, software becomes outdated. That cost is real and EBIT includes that. EBITDA goes one step further. It stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So EBITDA adds back depreciation and amortization. Why? Because EBITDA is trying to say, before accounting assumptions, how much raw operating profit does this business generate? And before we go any further, you have to understand this is the greatest Christmas tree in New York City. It, nobody knows about it. Well, the people know, who know know about it, but it's the New York Stock Exchange Christmas tree. Look at that thing. It is just amazing. I'm right under it. Look how close you can get. There's no crowds or anything. Here's the clean way to remember it. EBIT, the business after wear and tear. EBITDA, the business before the wear and tear. EBIT is more realistic. EBITDA is more forgiving. Neither is right or wrong. They just answer different questions. So let's do some simple numbers. Ah, simple in my mind. EBITDA, 200 million. Depreciation and amortization, 80 million. So the EBIT is 120. It lowers it down. Same business, two very different pictures. So again, I'm going to do that again. Let's say the EBITDA is 200 million. That's what we have. If we take out the depreciation and amortization, that takes out 80 million, that gives us an EBIT of 120. So the business doesn't look as strong. But it's all the same company, just looks different based on how you do it. Now imagine if the interest expense is 100 million. Using EBITDA, we look good. Under EBIT, we're barely surviving. That's why it matters. Now the banks, I like EBITDA because it smooths out earnings, it ignores accounting assumptions, it focuses on cash generating ability especially for capital intensive businesses, highly leveraged companies and private equity deals. And here's why it can be a little dangerous. Depreciation is not fake. Assets really do wear out. Ignoring that forever is how companies underinvest, overborrow, and suddenly need massive capital spending. That's why critics say EBITDA is earnings before reality. On the exams, you're gonna use EBIT unless they tell you otherwise in real life. EBIT is safety. EBITDA gives you like flexibility with the numbers. Smart analysts look at both. Now, interest coverage with EBIT tells you, can the business pay interest after wear and tear? Interest coverage with EBITDA.